going to be uh, part three of the series of tutorials for completing uh, Excel module four project. In the previous part, in part two, we have reached step 10, uh, and now we're up to step number 11. Goodrin wants to compare future payments for three different scenarios for park bond offering. Switch to the bond offering worksheet. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. And it already has some information in it. <clears throat> Um, she has already entered formulas in the range B9, D10 to calculate quarterly and annually payments for each option. So B9 already has a formula and so on. It basically adds things from um, other, uh, it calculates things from other cells. But what she wants to add um, <clears throat> In the range E9, E10, add column spark lines using the data range in B9, D10. So it has a few parts. Let's start with that. In the range E9, E10, insert column spark lines and tell them to use the data from B9 to D10. So E9 and 10 are right here. Inserting spark lines is under the insert menu, of course. And we've done those at the beginning of the project, only a different kind of spark lines. This time it's going to be column spark lines. In the beginning we did line, now it's column. And when I insert column spark lines, it asks me, okay, what do you want those spark lines? Those minute spark lines are like miniature little charts. What do you want them to be based on? And I can either type the range that they want me to type, which is uh, B9 through D10, or even easier, I can highlight from B9 to D10. You see how the window gets a little smaller, but as soon as I let go, it actually types. So either or, either type it or highlight it. It tells it, use the data from B9 to D10 as your um, range of data to draw those spark lines. Now, the second thing they want me to do is ungroup them. And that's also under the um, tab called spark line pretty much all the way to the right, there's ungroup. Usually when we ungroup something, it means that we wanna deal individually with each one of them. Now, what's wrong with these? They show basically a, you know, uh, like a loss. But look for instance at these three numbers. They're all around 15, do you see those? But the, the spark lines like uh, uh, exaggerate the difference between them to show like one of them is really small, medium, and one of them is really large. In other words, the borders, the, the, the uh, parameters of what's minimum, what's maximum is a little skewed because they're actually very close to one another. So what they want to do for each one of them is um, ungroup the spark lines, which we just did, then set the vertical axis maximum value to a loss of 15,000 for cell E9. So let's do that first. Maximum of a negative 15,000. So we select the one in E9. In the same um, tab, Sparkline, there's a button called Axis, which opens up a dialog. But we're not dealing with horizontal, we're dealing with vertical. And it has a place for minimum and maximum. In maximum, I'll change to custom value and enter the number they want, negative 15, zero, zero, zero. When I do that, look at what's gonna happen to those lines. It shows them much closer to one another because in effect, they are closer. They're all around negative 15. We'll do the same thing for this one. This one, they're all around 62, 63, so they're actually pretty close to one another, but because the minimum and maximum are not set correctly, it looks like one of them is so small it's non-existent, and you know, it, it's not really reflecting graphically the real difference between the numbers. So again, I'm going to, going to select it, I'm going to go to axis, vertical, maximum value, custom, negative 60. In other words, I'm telling it pretty much plot it around negative 60,000 and then show me the differences between them based on 60,000 because they're all around 60,000. And that's much more like it. Now it shows the real relationship between them. 
save. And that was requirement number 11. Save. Number 12 is to create what's called a clustered column chart, comparing those costs. So again, like almost everything we do in Excel, the numbers are already there. If we were computers, if we were machines, we were just fine with that, but we're humans. As humans, we respond to graphic things. That's the whole point of graphs, to turn numbers into visual things that we can emotionally respond to and see, that one's big, that one's small, this one's going up, this one's going down. Let's do a clustered column chart based on the values of in the range of A9, D10. Easiest way I know of doing this is to highlight that range to begin with. A9, D10. A9 all the way to D10. So that covers the names and the values. And then insert. And under all the, I can find it under column ones, but I can also find it under recommended charts. I think it happens to be the first one, clustered column. And clustered columns are columns that are clustered together, but they're always growing down. They're growing from the top down. Click, and it creates a chart. The next thing they want me to do is to We've done this. Actually, let's mark step 11 is done as well. Uh, and also 12A. And now we're doing 12B, which is to resize and position the chart. So the upper left is in A11 and the lower right is in D28. A11, D28. So I'm taking this chart and I'm moving it so it's top left corners in A11 and its bottom right is in D28. 28. I'm looking here. Yep, D28. As long as it's somewhere inside that cell, it can be a little to the left, a little to the right, as long as the corner is inside the cell that they requested. That's cool. Uh, save. The next thing they want me to do, which I believe is the last requirement, yep, A and B is to customize the chart that we just made. Uh, first, they want to enter a name for the chart, which is bond offering cost comparison. I usually try to copy, of course, I unbolded it, and I am copying, or, you know, con Command C on a Mac, Control C on, on Windows, and I will go to the chart title, double click, delete, the placeholder and instead paste what I copy, just making sure that I don't have an extra character, extra space. Good. And that was A, 13A. And one last thing, they want me to add data labels to the chart. So what uh, data labels basically mean that other than just seeing like, you know, a blue bar, there's going to be a number here. And if I'm unsure about, you know, exactly what it's supposed to look like, I'm going to the screenshot at the end of the instructions. And I see that what they want is this. See the difference? It looks just like my, just like my chart, only it has the numbers at the outer edge of each bar. So the way I add that is I select the chart, I go to chart design, add chart elements. There's more than one way of doing this, but this is the way that I found, you know, makes sense to me. And I'm looking for the category data labels. And in data labels, it asks me, okay, so where do you want to put them? Centered? Inside the end? Inside base, where I want them, even though it looks like it's upside down, is this one, outside edge, outside end. And when I choose that, I see that I chose correctly because now it looks exactly like the example. At the outside end of each one of them. So it shows me graphically how tall it is, but it also shows the actual number. And that's pretty much it. That is... That was the end of um, requirement number 13. And just to make sure, I save. And what I like to do a lot of times is go to um, 
D2L, go to uh, Minds tab. Um, let me close this and try to submit it as if I'm a student to see if I gave you all the right instructions. Maybe I forgot something, and if I did, I'm going to fix it. Upload. Here it is, the underscore two. It's the right name. Like they say, you know, cross your fingers with one hand and submit with the other. V view report. Open the report. And I got 100 out of 100, which eases my mind that I gave you all the right steps. If you do it the way I showed you, you should also get 100. So good luck. And uh, this concludes the tutorials for Excel. And I will see you in the tutorials for PowerPoint.